applauding the Pentagon's decisions. Others say this is a very dangerous idea. Joining me now with reaction are former Pennsylvania Congressman, former U.S. Navy three-star Admiral Joe Sestek, and a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute and contributing editor for City Journal, Heather McDonald. Um, all right, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Is it a little coincidental that on the day Hillary Clinton is, you know, after months of waiting, big testimony, that they announce that they're going to come out with this? Is that coincidental? Well, there's a lot of background to this, I think. But uh, it's, if that's the case, that's appalling because this is a, a decision with very long-term consequences that needs to be thought about, I think, more deeply. I, I would assume that this is more about the Obama agenda of absolute equality. I keep hearing the justification for this is to improve women's chances of career advancement. I've not heard anybody make the argument that this is a way to maximize our combat effectiveness. Well, you talk about this in a column you put on National Review Online today, and you go into some detail. You talk about um, uh, it's people in close quarters. Uh, you talk about the differences between men and women, the obvious differences, and you were very clear about it. I mean, endurance issues, for example, stamina issues, upper body strength. Usually, men are stronger than women. There are some exceptions, though. Well, we've seen with uh, the civilian armed forces that the pressure to make them gender neutral results in lowering physical standards. But even if we were to keep standards equal, which they're not already in the military, each, each force has different standards for men and women, bringing women into combat troops is inevitably going to change unit cohesiveness because sex is inevitable. Eros is a very powerful and irrational passion. And you're going to inevitably have normal, this is natural, it's nobody's at fault for this, people forming a sexual attachments. And that's going to, I think, disrupt how soldiers relate when their sole mission should be destroying the enemy. Joe Sestek, um, do you think America is ready for women in combat, prisoner of war? for stories that they come back and have to tell their families? Do you think America's ready for that? God forbid. Well, I have a lot of appreciation for what Heather just said, but the reason I support this is for the very pragmatic outcome that it can have for mission readiness. Sean, and to your question, when I was in the Indian Ocean and I launched one night in the war in Afghanistan, eight pilots, one of them was a young woman pilot. That night, she disregarded my orders not to dive low without requesting permission. But eight special forces had been ambushed by the Taliban. Four died, Sean, immediately. The other four just radioed for help right away. She felt she didn't have time. She dove three times in the middle of the night. They picked up their dead and they came home. They didn't care who saved their butt. They were just glad it was someone who was capable. Look, she could have been just like John McCain in Vietnam, captured. But the point was, we were better that night, not just because she was given equal opportunity, because we had opened up well, a demographic to have then. a much more capable force. In Rosberg versus Goldberg, a Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court decision, they talk about the purpose, for example, the selective service system um, and Congress's decision to exempt women from registration. They go into, since women are excluded from combat, Congre Congress concluded that they would not be needed in the event of a draft. Does that mean that maybe now that gets revisited, would you want women now to have to register for the selective service system and our daughters yeah. equally have to go to war? Sean, that's a great question because I have a daughter. And my answer is absolutely yes, for one reason. Yes, you're I saying? Want to have, yes, yes, because for one reason, We're I want draft the best. Women. If I just finish for a moment, Sean, the answer is yes, and for a big, very practical reason. I want the best out there. Look, only 22 percent of the youth that graduate from high school today qualify physically for the military, and 60 percent of those right. who go to boot camp don't even pass the physical standards. If we could have an Olympian like Missy May there, man, it would be great. Right. Thank you, Heather. Congressman, thank you. Great when to be with back, you, Sean, again. Secretary of State.